Good day, I'm Don Toot for Engineering TV. Today we're talking to David Roosh of Efficient Power Conversion, EPC, about gallium nitride and how to get the most benefit from the efficiencies that gallium nitride provides. David, can you elaborate on that? Well, first, thank you, Don. Uh, as power engineers, what we're always uh, trying to do is increase power density. Uh, and that means pushing more power in an in ever decreasing board space. Uh, and to do that, you, you need to improve your performance uh, of your power converters. Uh, and in particular, you'll need a, a better switching technology. Uh, and gallium nitride has a number of uh, material advantages over its predecessor, silicon. And we'll talk a, a little bit about how you can improve not only your electrical in-circuit performance, but also your thermal performance. Uh, and that's going to give you better overall performance in your designs and allow engineers to get higher power density to continue to meet the ever-growing demands uh, for higher density and higher performance. Okay, so what have we got for show and tell here? So what we have here is uh, essentially we've got some standard MOSFET technology uh, packaged and this is an S308 or LF pack uh, and this is what MOSFETs have been using uh, in various forms for a variety of years. Uh, as the push for power density, uh, better electrical and better thermal performance, uh, MOSFETs have tried to improve their packaging improve the ways that they can get better electrical as well as thermal performance. And something like this is a double-sided cooling MOSFET package. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we have uh, are GAN, EGAN FETs. As you can see first it's very small uh, and it has a much lower on resistance and that has to do with the advantages of the gallium nitride. Uh, but also with our chip scale packaging uh, we can get much better thermal performance. Uh, true double-sided cooling and that's going to help the user uh, extract more power from their design. Does the area matter? Because you've got a smaller area there. Well, and that's true. Uh, so when you look at thermal, thermal resistance or thermal impedance, as you continue to make these chips smaller, you have less area to get the heat out. And that's why the thermal efficiency of the package just becomes that much more important. Uh, so when you look at uh, the, the graph that that we have here, when you look at the y-axis, you'll have the, the thermal impedance. And on the x-axis, we, we look at die size. And what you can see is you make a die smaller, the thermal impedance will go up. Uh, when you look at uh, the ability to deliver heat from the device to the PC board, using that as a cooling path, you see that it's pretty consistent with technologies. Uh, for the different MOSFET packages and with GAN, uh, it's pretty a consistent trend. Uh, but looking at junction to case or taking heat out of the backside, uh, the alternate path, you can see that the EGAN FET has significant advantage. Uh, and that has to do with the chip scale packaging. Uh, when you look at a MOSFET device, there's a lot of layers built in. Each of those layers add inductance, they add resistance, they add cost, they lower reliability, and they significantly impede uh, the thermal flow. So the devices are not going to be as thermally effective. David, these thermal advantages, what can the user actually expect? So what we did, Don, that's a, that's a valid question, is what we did is, again, we, we built a variety of equivalent in-circuit test comparisons. Uh, we used the same size board, the same number of copper layers, same copper weight, same vias. We wanted to keep it as, as, as equivalent as possible. And then when you run the gallium nitride devices besides the best state-of-the-art silicon MOSFETs in uh, the standard packaging as well as advanced double-sided cooling MOSFET packages, you can see a significant advantage uh, with ECAM FETs. Uh, without heat sinking or, or active cooling, uh, we, we saw around a 40% increase in output power. And as we can see by our boards itself, the device is already smaller. So we're talking about shrinking the size and increasing the power capability. Uh, when you look at uh, things like adding heat sinks or airflow, uh, the double-sided cooling really shines uh, and our advantage just grows. Uh, we, we have around a 50% increase in capable output power. And that's from a combination of two things. It's better electrical performance and it's better thermal performance. Can you go into a little more depth about what a designer has to do to make sure that he or she is using the uh, using the package correctly. 
So with, with GAN, uh, there are some nuances to design. And we have a variety of materials. Uh, we have some textbooks talking about the basics. And our website uh, at epc-co.com has a number of white papers and app notes telling and educating users how to properly use these devices, which again are much faster uh, than their silicon predecessors and, and do offer a, a, you know, a slightly more challenging design. Uh, but with high performance, uh, new approaches are, need to be taken and we are uh, supplying our users and the engineers the tools to be successful designing these parts into their, into their boards. All right, and one more time, how do people, where do people go to get that extra information? So you can go to our website, uh, epc-co.com. Uh, we have a number of white papers, application notes, uh, as well as demo boards, uh, which have various circuit examples. And users can take these uh, and evaluate, learn, get to use their devices, and then it will help them design them into their boards and in, in, in products going forward. David, thank you. Thank you, Don.